Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanolathes at Dawn. I remain your host, Shadow Fury333, and this last match today is going to be between Filthas and Clone on Bandit Plains. One of my favorite maps, well, kind of second to Trojan Hills, but Trojan Hills is basically Bandit Plains, but smaller. But yeah, great map. And we're going to have Clone going for Life Eagles this time, and Filthas going for Shieldbot Factory. So almost, yeah, pretty much the same as last game. Filthas went for Shieldbot last game, although that was on Ravaged. Clone going for light vehicles on a map which I think is far better suited for vehicles just due to its size and the fact that there isn't as much of a choke point setup that makes it quite as inaccessible. Or quite as easy to make inaccessible to vehicles. I mean, that was one thing I was a bit surprised Fieldhouse did not do was terraform. I used terraforming to completely limit how Capricious could move. But in this case, it's not as relevant. You could theoretically, but it isn't going to be practical to do. Not in the same way that it is on Ravaged. So yeah, Failed Eyes going for a pretty quick standard opening dirtbag into into a Convict, while Clone opening with Mason and getting a bunch of Scorchers. I think Clone might be trying to go for a Scorcher Dive of their own. So we'll see how that goes. I mean, to be fair, this game was actually played before the one I casted first. Like, the timing doesn't totally line up. I cast games based on how I think that they're going to go, and I try to cast from what I think what looks like will be the... I don't know. Actually, they usually do, do it by order. I'm going to think of a date order. That, that's usually how I do it. Today it was a bit more. I had a couple games I had in mind, and then I found another game that looked good, and then I kind of casted them in the reverse order I found them. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. The point is, this game was actually played before the first game we saw today, so clone... Wouldn't have been taken by the Scorcher Dive, but Scorcher Dives are so common that it's like, that's just a thing you do. I don't know if they're going to do do that, though. I mean, you have the Dark going around messing with the Dirt Bag. But otherwise, not much. Not a whole lot, really unusual. Filthos just sending a bunch of Dirt Bags around to scout out and stake out positions. Nothing out of the ordinary. And Clone, on the other hand, I mean, they have Scorchers, but I don't think they're going to be using them for anything more than just defense. Yeah, one of them staked out. One of them's helping defend this Mason. The other one just getting rid of a dirt bag before it does any real damage. And otherwise, I don't see any real evidence of a Scorcher Dive. I mean, we do see that there is a Q, so Clone might still be thinking Scorcher Dive. But Scorcher Dive on this map is not a common thing. Mind you, sending a bunch of Scorchers to assault some expansion or something, that's not totally unusual. But at this point, Fieldhouse is pretty well defended, so I don't think that's going to be a problem. And Clone, on the other hand, they're not going to be attacked anytime soon either. There's a few bandits moving around the map, but they're not going to be able to get around the map quickly enough for it to matter. And if they do, well, by that point, Clone will have their defenses up. I mean, they have Scorchers up, and they actually do have enough Scorchers. They could go for a Scorcher Dive, and it looks like it's not going to be a Commander Scorcher Dive, although it might be. I think that Clone is... are they aware of the Commander's position? Doesn't look like it, no. Never mind. Might not actually be the case then. But yeah, it looks like it's going to be going for the commander's position at some point. But first off, going to be going to the northwest to try to take that out. Because that would be where Feltos would expand to. That is generally the first place the person who starts the center expansion expands to. And conversely, someone who starts in the southeast or northwest expands to the center first. So yeah, Clone going to the center, for, sorry, the south, the northwest, the northwest, because they're in, the, whatever. They know what they're doing, I'm tripping over my words, but they're going to the northwest first, they want to take that out, they're not going to be able to do so. There's too many bandits, there are too many lotuses, Clone will probably realize this quickly and turn around, because that's how Clone plays. Or, no, apparently they're going to sacrifice a couple Scorchers. Okay, a little unusual, but at this point, meeting up the Scorchers in the center of the map... Commander Dive would have some use still, at this stage in the game. I mean, it'd be tricky, but six Scorchers would be enough to kill the Commander if Clone goes up here, which I think... Can they even physically do that? No! They have, like, one path they can go up with Scorchers right now. So that's going to be a bit of a problem if they want to go for a Commander Dive. But I think it'll just be... Ex just Well, Dart's trying to scout around, see what's being built. It's going to be Expansion Rating more than it's going to be Commander Destruction. Because the commander isn't that important. I mean, 20 metal up, that's... That's commander killing importance time. It's, it's still worth doing. 
I just don't think it'll happen. And Veldas actually being a little bit paranoid of that. That's why they're on this cliff. And they're they're somewhere the Scorchers can't get them. And Clone's Commander taking heavy damage. It should go down. Kind of depends on if the upgrade is going to be done in time. And the upgrade is done. Felthos running away with a bandits, not wanting to risk it. They might have been able to kill the commander, but not anymore. Like, it would have been really close. And instead, just moving away. Making sure that they don't leave a commander corpse inside of Clone's base and allow Clone to reclaim with all that commander money. And yeah, that, that would suck. As it is now, Clone's already gotten a lot of reclaim to work with from here. And that's... Because bear in mind, that's a level 2 command... Well, 12 build power. Level 2 economy commander. So that is 12 build power. A little higher than normal. And on top of that, Scorchers are coming in, not for a standard dive, but instead going in to get rid of... Ah, one at a time! This is not what they want to do. Clone losing a lot of units to positioning. Scorchers not able to bring all their guns to bear. Ah, man, that should have been the Scorcher winning easily, but unfortunately the Scorchers were, in, were lined up. I think they were point moved, not line moved. So they were going single file right into the line of bandits, leaving the bandits plenty of time to kill them all. It was rather unfortunate. Felthas now moving their commander off of that hill. They're they're more sure of where the Scorchers are, so they're less paranoid. And they have a lot more defenses to work with, but honestly, at this point, there's enough Scorchers that, assuming they're not point moved, and they actually bring all their heat rays to bear at the same time, they should be able to rip apart these defenses up until this Lotus. At that point, they'll be out of range. But I don't think Clone cares. I don't even know if Clone knows. Clone knows. Clone knows there's something there. Going for an Amphib bot plat plant as well, while Felthas goes for the gunship plant. Both of them look like they'll be finished up in a few seconds. <sighs> what would Clone be going for the Amphib pot plant for? Probably ducks? Not sure if they're going to go command... Commander hunting seems unlikely. Ducks would be the commander hunting choice, but I don't know. I almost feel like it'd be grizzly or something. Or... Nope. Oh! Scallop drop! That's what this is about. Oh, no, 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 it is a grizzly. What? Grizzly drop? I mean, that's possible. Don't usually see that, though. Failthos, on the other hand, is going for a more typical Banshee rush, which, or Banshee assault. That is what I would expect from a gunship plant, but what Clone's doing right now, it looks like it's got to be a grizzly drop. They're going to be building a Vindicator on top of that to transport the grizzly straight in. That's the only thing that really makes sense with this build. Failthos going for the... Banshees while keeping the ground forces intact. And better played Scorchers this time around. Getting rid of the bandits. This is how Scorchers... This is how half a dozen Scorchers... A little over half a dozen Scorchers should deal with a little over half a dozen bandits. Ripping them apart with almost no casualties. That's what should be happening. Actually, it's closer to a dozen Scorchers. Well, a dozen each. But yeah. Scorchers are terrifying. They're also a little bit unwieldy. But they're terrifying and they work well. So Grizzly is building up, but I don't see any Vindicator. So I don't know what that Gunship plan was for. Like, is Clone planning on doing something with it later? Because the only thing I could think of would be a drop. That or, I don't know, going for Brawlers or something? Or Banshees? I mean, that's what Fieldhouse is going for. So far, there's four Banshees built up. I mean, Fieldhouse is basically just delaying until the Banshees get built up before they can just assault the Banshees, ripping everything apart. And this should work fairly well. Clone doesn't have any real anti-air. They have a few defenders here and there. They have no Stardust, so the Banshees in particular aren't going to be too put off. And there isn't a whole lot of other defenses. No anti-air being built up. Clone does have the possibility of building up anti-air, building up crashes really quickly. Well, sort of quickly. There's only 20 metal per second being pushed into any of these factories. So, only so quickly. Actually, how much are crashes? Yeah, that'd be 11 seconds. Because so I can build one crasher every 11 seconds at this point. That won't be enough. There's actually way too many... There's seven Banshees coming in here, and at this point, I believe their existence is known. Nope, just now. Well, they might have been known before, but definitely just now. To confirm their Banshees. They have been sighted. And do we see any crashes coming up? Yes. No, Scorchers. Scorchers and Rapiers. Okay, so Clone's just going for the gunship plant just to have air as a reactive option. Interesting choice, and Rapiers definitely are a good idea against Banshees, but it looks like the Banshees going straight for the main base before the Rapiers have a chance to build up their numbers, so the Banshees should be able to counter this just by sheer numbers. They will get slowed down a bit, and a few of them will die. But I think overall they won't care. I'm a bit surprised Feldhouse didn't bring Nats along, though. I know it's, not, it's a weird criticism to make, but 
Banshee Nat combos are terrifying. Like, I've... That's what I tend to do. If anyone sees the games that I play or plays against me, that's a thing that I will often try to do, is throw a bunch of Nats in with Banshees. Because that way they can stun out Lotuses and stun out other things and just reduces the amount of damage Banshees are taking while allowing them to still completely destroy everything. You get fewer Banshees, but the Nats are also additional targets that Antier has to deal with. It's probably not that great of a strategy, but it works well when it works. But no, at this point, Phil has going for pure Banshee, while Cohen going for pure Rapier. And otherwise, it's going for Conscious. I mean, Conscious... Clone. Pronouncing Clone's name messes up my accent. Conscious are... 7.5 metal per second builders, and that is going to get Clone's economy working for production, finally. I mean, between the three factories, they are actually using up what they have. What they need now is energy. But they do have enough build power to be useful. Like they are, The metal is being used. Except for the lack of energy. That's the one problem. And now, Rapier's coming in, and it looks like Tridents will be coming in on top of that for Failthas. Or Failthas, rather. And Clone going for just the Grizzly Assault. I mean, this is a bit of a problem, although admittedly, surrounded by Banshees, or surrounded by Bandits, that should do the trick. The problem being, of course, the support Rapiers. So, Fieldhouse taking up the center, taking the west side of the map, while Clone, on the other hand, taking the eastern side of the map, with the Grizzly basically being... Wait, I think there's units lying in to wait in ambush, or lying in wait to ambush the Grizzly. To push the Grizzly back down that cliff. Like, that's the thing. That is what's trying to happen here. And that Grizzly actually is being pushed down. It's working out just fine. Feels us keeping their northeast cliff relatively safe and keeping Kloon relatively contained, all things considered. I mean, right now, if you look at the map, Feltas, they pretty much have this entire area to them. Mostly because of these units here, but still. They have this entire area essentially to them. There's not a whole lot Kloon can do right now without breaking up this center section. Because these defenses basically provide a nice staging area for any counterattack, so Kloon can't really take the center right now. And Felthas can just take everything along here. Felthas got has got everything here. And they already have a me metal advantage, as it is. So Clone right now, I mean, they invested a lot into that Grizzly, and with a Vindicator, they could have dropped the Grizzly into the main base and done a huge amount of damage. I don't know why they didn't go for the Vindicator and go for the drop. Because, I mean, going for Gunship Plant and another factory. Usually Gunship Plant and Cloaky Bot Factory, or Gunship Plant and Amphib Factory, that's because you want to go for a drop. Either Scallop Drop, or Warrior Drop, or Warrior Zeus Drop, or Grizzly Drop in this case. Although the Grizzly Drop is really risky, but still, that's a lot of damage inside the main base. When you don't have to deal with the fact that Grizzlies are slow as molasses, yeah, that would actually work really well. It would be like a wave of molasses, which is, despite being slow, extremely damaging. So, it's like it happens right there. It's like a big molasses tower exploding inside their base and coating everything in sweet, sweet death. Pretty much, except with lasers. That's how Grizzly Drops work. Like a laser-filled molasses vat exploding. Anyhow, Fieldthus just... Not really able to do a huge amount of damage to Clone's base directly, but still... Like, not in any one fell swoop, but just slowly grinding away, getting closer and closer to the main base. Clone, on the other hand, they have a lot of X's at this point, actually. They're not producing a whole lot, either. They have the caretakers to make it work, but it's just not really going anywhere. Thaldos, on the other hand, not accessing, and with a lot of energy as well, so they're making sure that is never going to be a problem. And building a crow! To finish this off, anyone who watched the tournament is familiar with this, because Fieldthos loves building crows to end off games. That is their strider, or demi-strider rather, of choice, is the crow. And the way this game is going, we probably will see the crow actually get his D-gun off. It's going to be another minute or so. Once that's done, the grizzly doesn't have much of a chance. I mean, what can the grizzly really do? It fires off a 1500 damage beam every 6 seconds? Yeah, that's... Not going to deal much against a crow, which has like 16,000 health. That's not going to help. Whereas the crow's D gun, how much damage does the crow's D gun deal? 250 times 75. Granted, that's over a very large area, so it's hard to say that it's exactly dealing a huge amount of damage to one thing, but still, that's probably going to kill the grizzly. Or just go into one of the bases or one of the expansion areas and just. or defenses, rip it apart with crow. I mean, why not? At this point, Clone is pushing with that Grizzly. That Grizzly is being healed up. I mean, it's not being left to die. Clone is, of course, supporting it. It's just hard for it to do anything. 
Like, it's hard for it to go anywhere that isn't well defended, or has a bunch of units already, or is going to be hit by a half a dozen rapiers with slow, because rapiers all have slow, or by a crow, because that's done. I mean, at this point, field toss, just, like I said, they have this southwest side. They're, they're taking advantage of that, too. They're building it up. They're building it up fast. And Clone, they actually have metal extractors they could take, like this one over here, that they aren't taking. Or this one back here that they're just now taking. I mean, they have a fair amount of reclaim to work with, but not a whole lot of stuff reclaiming it. And at this point, the Crow is coming in here. It should be degunning right about now. There it goes. Get rid of those Scorchers. Heavily damage that Grizzly. Probably don't get rid of the Grizzly in the process, but still. Deal a fair amount of damage, at least. The Scorchers were the big support unit. Those are gone. The Rapier should be able to clean up just fine. The Crow continuing to build up just steam. That's the only thing it can really build up. But it's building it up. And it's ripping everything apart. And this is pretty much over. I mean, the Crow might actually die. Is that half health? Or actually, wow, that's taking a lot of damage. Veltas might actually lose the Crow. That's new. Yeah, the Crow's dead. There's no way that can be saved in time. I mean, a valiant effort being made, but if that Crow gets focused down, the Trident's... Oh, the Trident's just distracting enough. The only thing keeping that Crow alive is that Clone's units were not focus firing the Crow. But still, that didn't make a difference as much as the game was going. Clone already had a massive economic advantage. It really just came down to... Clone was going so heavily for that Grizzly and didn't manage to deal a huge amount of damage with it. I still think they should have gone for the Vindicator for the drop. I mean, you need the large transport unit to transport Grizzlies, but if he had done that, if they had done that, that would have been, like I said, inside the base. The laser molasses. That would have done it. But yeah, this as it was, I mean, metal income was relatively even up until the midpoint of the game. At which point, Failthas pulled ahead because Clone wasn't able to really keep territory. And then go for the southwest at all. It was really kind of bizarre. On a smaller map, Clone's strategy would have worked just fine because the Grizzly would have commanded all the attention and would have torn a bunch of stuff apart while cutting a swath through to Failthas' main base. But Bandit Plains is just a bit too big for that to happen by walking. Not without the counter being built up over the course of the next five minutes that your opponent has before the Grizzly finally makes it, finally just ambles its way into their base. Just about crawls given how fast it's going. But yeah, that was really the thing. Like, unit value was about was growing on par until halfway through the game. Definitely units killed and losses about even. That's the thing, is that it really was kinda even. And then the grizzly was being built and that grizzly just took up so much money. And there wasn't a whole lot spread around that clone could use to just harass around and deal with Fieldhouse's defenses and make sure Fieldhouse didn't have anything built up. The Amphid plant wasn't a bad idea. I just think the Grizzly was not a great idea because the big thing that was currently being missed that was currently missing in Clone's army was the ability to go up mount or go up cliffs arbitrarily. Because vehicles can't easily do that. But there was a few other blunders too, like the Scorchers here. Anyway, that was a pretty good game though. That was it was interesting to see light vehicles on this map, which is a map that you don't see light vehicles on a lot. They can work, but like I said, there are certain ramps that aren't vehicle pathable. So it's a little bit harder in some cases for them to do anything. Normally you see cloaky and shield bot factories here. Occasionally amphib, sometimes starting with gunships. Not often vehicles, but it's neat to see. Anyway, that was that, so I hope you enjoyed that. And that's going to be it for me tonight, so thanks for watching and have a good night.